So I was sent an email by somebody who was having a problem building something and asked me if I could help work out what was the issue and point them in the right direction. The thing that I was sent concerns Ryan Taylor and his Easy Power Plan PDF. And it's this amazing machine that is able to generate electricity uh, for stuff you find lying around and cut your energy bills. And that, of course, sounds great. So I had a look into it. It did capture my imagination. I had a look into it. And I'm going to do a review. But before I do that review, which can be a bit talky and a bit long, I can say quite categorically, if it was me, I would run a mile from this thing. I would not touch it with a barge pole. I would not throw my money down that particular drain. I just wouldn't do it, okay? And there are reasons I wouldn't do it. And I'm going to go into those reasons. But straight up front, if you're thinking about Ryan Taylor's Easy Power Plan, then if it was me, and it's just my opinion, I would not do it. Okay, so, why? Why wouldn't I do that? Well, there are a few main reasons, actually, and the first one is to do with the way it's actually advertised. I mean, he's got a lot of money from this, and he has clearly spent some of that money on an underhand advertising campaign. Because when you read something like that, the first thing that you actually do is search to see if it's a scam. So you put in the search terms, scam, review, warning, danger, all that sort of stuff. And if you do that, then you'll get pages and pages of reviews. When you look at these reviews, and I can tell you I've watched about a dozen of them, they're all the same. They're a computer-generated, usually female voice on a slideshow, extolling the virtues of the power plan while conclaiming to be a scam alert. I just think that, well, I think two things. Well, one thing is I think that's horrendous. The other thing is I think it's stunningly clever. I mean, the guy has clearly thought about what people would search, and then he's scattered answers to that that are only positive. Because that makes me even more suspicious when I see things like that. Now, I did find two reviews. One was uh, uh, some I think he might have been a, an Indian chap talking about it, and he, he didn't come down one way or the other. He was kind of on the fence about it. And the other was a young lad who, who extolled the virtues of it in, in a kind of a, a video log, something like that. Um, they were a bit weird. If you find them, watch them, and you'll find them a bit weird. But the bulk of them were just exactly as I described, these slideshows. And of course, that makes me suspicious. So the advertising campaign that the guy is running, I think, is underhand, and I think horrendous for that. Now, the advertising campaign taps into all of those things that we're worried about. Um, prices of rising electricity, uh, the, the conservation of the earth, uh, protection of our children in the future. All that stuff has been pulled into his advertising campaign to touch that nerve that we're interested in. And then he's done something really rather clever, like I say, if not horrendous, it is to make sure that anything, or as far as he can, make sure that anything negative is actually twisted into a positive about the thing. So that's the first thing that warned me, really, and made me think about twice about it. Sorry. <coughs> the second thing is, um, let's take that aside. Even if it is a little underhand, let's say to ourselves, will it work? Can I actually build it? And of course, this was my friend's problem. He was trying to build it and couldn't build it. So, of course, I had to look at all those instruction videos to see if I could actually build it. And to be honest, there is insufficient information contained in those instructions for you to be able to build it. It's just not enough information. The product, as shown, is different from the one that you're actually told how to build. There are clear and distinct differences between the two products. It's not like a minor difference, they're just massively different. So you can't build what he's showing from what is described because he's describing something else. And then the description is incomplete. It doesn't tell you everything that's actually needed. This is a trick. This is a trick used very often because we are all a little insecure about our ability to do things, particularly when it comes to something new. So like my friend, what you think is you've made a mistake. You don't automatically think this is tosh. You think, oh, I've done something wrong. And of course, that is a trick used. Now, it's incredibly difficult, actually, to describe in full something so that anybody can make it. Now, I try to do that with batteries, and they're essentially a five-component part. 
we go through the five components and I demonstrate them and I get lots of emails about pe from people who are saying they're not being, still not being able to do it and I tend to answer those because I really genuinely want people to be able to build it so I'm very open about that and I give very full <laughs> descriptions. Some of the videos I do can be very long and just full of intricate descriptions about how to build batteries so they don't get many views but you have to try be able to do that if you want somebody to replicate something. On something as complicated as this machine build in, in a dozen video tutorials or not, the chances of you replicating it to mine are insignificant anyway, because there's just no way that can happen. And then information is deliberately missing, which is really quite sneaky, actually. So there's not enough information for you to be able to do it. That's the other reason I wouldn't actually be interested in this. The third reason, which is perhaps more fundamental, is what's the guy actually doing? Now, I don't get confused about uh, lots of things put together to make a complicated machine, what I tend to do is break it down to its basic parts and ask myself, can I build those basic parts? So because the thing you need to do with this device is ask yourself, what are those basic parts? Now, the first part of it is, is actually real. The first part of it is nothing more than a generator. The guy goes through a, a little coil structure and then he builds a spinning magnet setup and he spins the magnets and it generates. Now, of course, it's going to do that. If you have any arrangement of coil and magnets and you spin that magnet past that coil, you're going to generate. And we've made loads of those generators. Just any arrangement will do that. So Ryan's little arrangement is actually going to generate. And then what does he do with it? Well, he straps on an alternator. Now, an alternator traditionally, of course, is another generator. But actually transforming an alternator into a motor is a, an easy enough exercise. Again, we've done one. We've taken this, which is an alternator, and we've changed it slightly, we actually took out the restrictions on it, fed in three wires, and it's suddenly become a motor. So that's actually a three-phase motor. So we rewired the, the alternator as a three-phase motor. If I want to run that, what I need is a three-phase motor controller. And Ryan's electronics are basically that. But they're basically a set of MOSFETs to run that generator as a motor. So he has built a generator strapped to a motor. Now, that's every school child's dream, isn't it? If all you have to do is get a generator and a motor and strap them together, you'll have perpetual motion. Doesn't every, every child think of that? It doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. And, and if you want to prove that to yourself, just go buy yourself two DC motors. A DC motor and a DC generator are identical. Strap them together, wire them together. The theory is, when it runs as a generator, it will create energy. That energy will be fed into the motor and turn the motor, which will turn the generator, and it should go on forever. Okay, that's the theory. And you can give that a go, and you'll find yourself, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work because of the losses in the system, and they're considerable. It takes a lot of energy to turn that magnet through that coil to generate, and you can't do it. Now, sometimes you think, okay, let's break that section, let's put some capacitors in there. So we turn the generator, it'll charge the capacitors, that gap that can then take that charge of the capacitors and spin the motor, and we can do that with a switch. And you can try that, and you'll find that it equally doesn't work. You spin the generator for a bit and charge up the capacitors. You will spin the motor, and the motor will spin less than they took to spin that generator. Try and see, it's a couple of capacitors, a couple of motors, $10 will sort you out and you will be able to see that strapping a motor to a generator, however complicated the electronics, isn't going to work. Now that's exactly what he did. This black box of electronics is very little more than a motor controller and a capacitor bank and a switch. That's about all it really is. And then we've got our alternator been adapted to a motor and we've got our generator. So those are the basic components of it. And when you strap those together, it's easy enough and cheap enough to prove that that actually isn't going to work. You don't need to spend $50 on a book to see that. You can go down to the hardware store and spend $10 and see that. Now, this stuff is supposed to be able to uh, be built from things lying around, just general bits of scrap that you find lying around. I couldn't build it. I would have to order special parts. The uh, solid-state relay that it uses with the MOSFET removed, you can't buy those at a local hardware store. You have to... Um, order them online or go to a specialist store to buy them. So it's not going to be bits that you're going to find lying around particularly. So there's quite a few reasons there, I think. One, the advertising campaign just screams horrendous to me. Two, 
the information is insufficient and incomplete to be able to reproduce what he's showing. Three, fundamentally what he's actually doing I don't think can possibly work. That's enough for me to be able to say I'm not spending my $50 on that ebook. And if you want a recommendation, I would recommend you don't either for all of those reasons. But equally, if you have hopes that it might work, then go back to the fundamentals of what they're doing and look at the components of stuff and you may be able to reproduce it from those fundamentals rather than trying to reproduce it from the uh, incomplete information. But again, I wouldn't bother. I would just run a mile. Anyway, I was asked to look at it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I do hope it helps and thank you very much for watching.